Okay, welcome to Math 0314, uh, Lesson 1.4, Solving Inequalities in One Variable. Uh, so, when you see an inequality, um, what this is saying is 3x minus 7 is greater than 2 parentheses x minus 4 minus 1. Okay? So, what you the way that you approach this is the same way you approach a regular equation. You just want to solve. So, uh, when I like I, what I said before in section one point one, uh, you can simply just distribute the two. If you see parentheses, go ahead and distribute. Okay, and then. We want to combine like terms. On the left side, there's nothing to put together, but on the right side, we have negative 8 and minus 1, so I can put those together. Okay. And now we have to move things to the other sides, so I'm going to subtract 2x because I want to put my x's together. And then we'll put the numbers together, so I'll add 7 to both sides. So x is greater than negative 2. Now, sometimes they'll ask you to graph it. Okay? So this is just this is just x. So we'll, we'll start with negative 2. And this means that we will shade to the right. What this is saying is that x is greater than negative 2. There's negative 2. And so we draw a parenthesis because we are just greater than, we are not including. If we were including, we would have a line under, okay? And then this, instead of being a parenthesis, this would become a bracket, okay? So it's a parenthesis because it does not include the uh, uh, negative two and values to the right. And one other thing here that I think is always interesting to note is that the reason why we do the parentheses is that there are actually an infinite number of numbers um, that are between any two values. So the reason I bring this up is, if you look at this, you can't choose the next number that is um, greater than negative two. So if I asked you, for example, what is the number? What's the number that's greater than negative two? What's the first number that's greater than negative two? Most people think negative one, right? But that's not true because negative 1.5 is closer to negative 2 than negative 1. And if I say negative 1.5, then maybe you're thinking, well, hey, why don't I just use negative 1.9? But then I could argue, well, negative 1.99. And then you could argue, well, what about negative 9.999? And you see, I could add an infinite, I could just keep adding 9s, right? So... Well, what that is really telling you is that between any two values, there are an infinite number of numbers, and I can just play this game and just keep adding nines forever and ever. Now, one other thing I want to note here is that it, I cannot say that it's 9999 repeating, because 999 repeating, negative 1.999 repeating, is actually negative 2. Um, so that's a little bit more than be beyond this course, but... I think it's important to note that that's why we use the parentheses, because we can't really say what's the next number next to negative 2, right? Okay, so if you don't have a line under, it's a parentheses, okay? One other thing here is sometimes students struggle with realizing, let me just rewrite this, realize, uh, struggle with realizing what direction if you struggle with this, just think of this as an arrow. Okay, if x is on the left side, x must be on the left side, you can think of this as an arrow, and it shades. And what shade what direction is it shading? It's shading to the right. The arrow is pointing to the right. Okay, let's jump on to the next one. Okay, so more of the same, we're gonna distribute. Okay, so we get 8x minus 4, 7x plus 1. And I apologize, I should have told you to pause the video and try it on your own. Um, I'm going to assume that you, you're doing that for each of these. Uh, but you distribute, so if you didn't pause the video, pause now and try to solve the rest of it on your own. Um, well, 
and then I'm assuming that you've had a go at it. Uh, we're going to subtract 7x from both sides. We're going to add 4 to both sides. And x is greater than 5. So again, if I'm going to shade, it's parentheses, 5. Shade off to the right. If, if it helps, there's an arrow that's pointing to the right. So my arrow will also point to the right. Okay, so pretty straightforward. It's what we've been doing. Um, let's look at the next one. Okay, so now notice this is saying less than. So negative 2x minus 5 is less than 2. Okay, so um, pause the video, have a go at it. And I'm assuming that you've done that. And let's solve it. So we'll add 5 to both sides. Now here's something very interesting. This is the first part that is a little different than an equation. When I divide through by negative 2, what I have to do is I have to flip the inequality. And the question should, that should emerge in your mind is, why? Well, to answer that, let me ask you a simple question. Which is greater, 1 or 2? Hopefully you said 2. Okay. Let me ask you another question. Which is greater, negative 1 or negative 2? Negative 1 is greater than negative 2. You'd rather be in debt $1 than be in debt $2, right? Um, the clear representation of this is on a number line, right? Right? Numbers on the right are bigger than numbers on the left. So whenever we negate a number, we have to flip the inequality to represent which is bigger. And hence, that's why I had to flip the inequality. Okay? Again, if I graph it, to the right again. Okay. One thing I do want to note is that on your homework, it is it wants you to be very precise with where you put negative 7 over 2. So the, the easy way of realizing what negative 7 over 2 is, if you drop 7 back 1, you have negative 6 over 2. So it's 3. So this would be, seven, if this was negative 7 over 2, this would be negative 3.5. Okay. So if this is negative 3.5, this is between negative 3 and negative 4. And so when you when you graph it, you need to be make sure that you're pretty much in the middle. Okay, You can't just put any point in between negative 3 and negative 4. So take note of that when you're working through the homework. Let's go on to the next one. So if you haven't done so already, pause the video. Try it on your own. Assuming you had a go at it. So uh, what do we do here? Well, um, treat it like a regular equation. I'm going to add 12, combine like terms. It's going to be 32. And then I'm going to divide by negative 4, just like in the previous question. Because I'm dividing through by a negative, I have to flip the inequality. Note here that now I have x is less than negative 8. So we haven't drawn this yet. But this will be done with a bracket. And now it's going to the left because the drew an arrow would be pointing to the left, but x is less than negative 8. Okay. The way I always kind of think about it is if it has a line, then the, the shape I'm creating is done with lines. Okay. Um, also, this, is, uh, this means we're including negative 8. So this section would include the value negative 8 when we're talking about values that would work for the inequality. Alright, so now we're getting into the point where everything is is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I do want you to note on a question like this, you could divide through by 2 because everything is divisible by 2. Um, so if the numbers were really big, I probably would do that. Uh, these numbers are not that big, so I'll do it the traditional way the way you, you, you're probably thinking of doing, which is distributing. So we'll distribute. And I'll go ahead and distribute on this side too. So I'll get negative 6 plus 18 greater than or equal to 2 minus 2x plus 16. And then I'm going to put stuff together. 
So on the left side, I got, they're not like terms. But on the right side, I do have 2 and 16. So I can put those together and get 18. So we're left with this. And then I'm going to put my uh, combined like terms. So I'm going to add 6x to the other side. So in this situation, when I have an option, what I, I like to do is I like to put keep my x's positive. And y'all, everyone's coming from a different background. Some people always like to have x on the left side. I try to keep things positive. Sorry about that. And so I'm going to subtract 18. This is also very interesting because I get 0 is greater than or equal to 4x. Finish it off. Divide by 4. So this is going to give me 0 is greater than or equal to x or x is less than 0. Okay. Um, these statements are synonymous. Um, so this is another thing that students sometimes struggle with is how to, how to do this. There's two ways of translating this in your mind is if you want x to go back to the left side, um, what you can do is think the back of this is pointing at x. So on this one, that has to still be pointing at x, right? Or you can say if I flip this and this, then the, if I flip the positions, right, then the inequality has to flip too. Either way works. Okay, let me just get rid of all that. So if I graph it, uh, x is less than 0, so if 0 is here, less than or equal to, I should say. And we'll show you all to here. And that's your answer. So hopefully this makes sense. Also, um, you're starting to see, I hope, a little bit of redundancy in terms of the, how they approach the questions. So once you get to the point that you know how to solve the problem, um, instead of watching me solve it, pause the video and solve it yourself. This means a lot more if you practice on your own as opposed to just watching me. Okay, so with that being said, please pause the video, look at number six, and then we'll have a go at it together. All right, so I'm assuming that you've paused the video, you've tried it on your own, let's do it together. So we're gonna distribute, so we're gonna get 15x plus five, is less than 20x minus 20. Um, I'm going to subtract 15x. Again, everybody has their own way. If you don't like this, you don't have to do it this way. I like to put my x's. I try to make my x's positive because I always tend to forget to flip the inequality. So I just it's one less thing to remember if I just make the x's positive. You could do it however it makes you happy. So 25 is less than 5x, divide by 5, 5 is less than x, or x is greater than 5. Refer back to the previous problem if you're struggling with understanding what just happened, right? Just flip sides, flip, flip the inequality. Uh, here's 5. Because it's just less than, or greater than, so parentheses, and there we have it, okay? Now I'm giving you fractions, so go ahead, pause the video and have a go at it. You should treat it the same way as if this was an equation, and I've assumed that you've paused the video, you've had a go at it. Let's do it together. So I'm just going to multiply through by negative 3. So when I distribute negative 3, Notice negative 3 has to go in front of both of these as well, okay? So this is going to leave me with this negative 3 and this negative 3 are going to cancel out. So I'm going to look at negative 5x plus 2. Did I multiply by a negative? Yes. So I have to flip the inequality. This becomes a negative 3x plus negative 3 times 2, okay? Um, clean it up. So negative 5x plus 2 less than negative 3x minus 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Combine like terms. I'm going to add 5x to both sides. So 2 is less than 2x minus 6. And then I'm going to add 
six to the other side. Eight is less than two x. And to finish it off, space this. I'm going to divide by two. So four is less than x, or x is greater than four. So when I graph this, here's four. Parentheses, because it's just greater than, push it off to the right. All right, more of the same. Pause the video, have a go at it, and we'll talk about it in a sec. Okay, so I've assumed that you've paused the video, you try to solve this one, and it's the same thing. I'm going to distribute a negative three again. I thought I have a negative three. Yeah, the other one's negative three as well, huh? So multiply through by negative three. So we get x plus one. I have to again flip the inequality, less than or equal to. Now, negative three times negative x is going to be positive three x, and negative three times one is negative three. Okay. Notice here, I just jumped straight into doing the process, um, and you can do that if you want to, but if it helps you to rewrite it as negative 3 times the quantity x plus 1 over negative 3, uh, I would flip the inequality because now you've, you've multiplied by negative, negative 3 times negative x plus negative 3 times 1. If it helps to write it out this way, and then apply the math so you can visualize it, please do so. It's whatever it's whatever's clearest to you. But do remember, because we're multiplying by 8, we have to flip the inequality. Okay, so from here, this is pretty much what we've been doing. Subtract x from both sides. 2x minus 3. And I'm hoping at this point, this procedure is becoming second nature, because you've done it so many times. Divide through by 2, divide through by 2. So x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So, uh, because it's greater than, let's do a bracket. To the right. And there you have it. And that is the end of the section. So not all the sections are going to take an hour and some change to get through. Uh, and you can see that this, and this is true of math, which is that once you understand the foundation, as you move on to other sections, it actually becomes um, easier and easier. So hopefully this wasn't too bad, and I will see you in the next video.